Let's talk about Revit API events and PyRevit hooks, as they can unlock a whole new world of possibilities for Revit. Event in programming refers to an action, which can be detected by the software. This allows us to take a piece of code and subscribe it to a certain event or an action. And then whenever this event gets triggered, our piece of code will act as an event handler and it will be executed. It still sounds confusing, isn't it? But let's think how this can be useful. Anyone who manages Revit models knows that import cat is a cursed button, and it's always better to link your cat files instead. So you might tell others to link instead of importing, but they will do so anyways. So now you decide that you want to create a Revit API event and give them a huge warning message saying that cat import is not allowed every time they click on this button, unless they write you a password and then they can use it. We'll actually create this kind of event by the end of this video. But before we begin, I want to let you know that you can grab my free ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Revit API. It's a 51 page ebook which will help you learn Revit API and provide a ton of reusable code snippets. Link will be somewhere in the description. Now, let's go back to the events and talk about what kind of event types are available to us. There are four types of events in Revit API. There are database events, which monitor your projects. You can find them under application class. Then there are user interface events, which monitor certain UI actions. And you can find these under UI application class. Then the next we have common binding events. They allow us to monitor certain buttons in Revit and do something when they're triggered. For example, we can monitor import cat button and do something when it's clicked. And lastly, there is iUpdater, which can monitor changes in the project and piggyback during the change to do something extra. The iUpdater is not technically an event, but it has similar behavior in terms of how it's being used. While there are lots of different events, in this lesson, we'll work with the command binding events, because I want to subscribe to an import cat command and show a warning message to the users when they click on it. So we'll focus on that, and if you want me to cover any other types of events, comment down below which one you want to hear about and how you want to use it. Alright, let's talk about how do we subscribe to an event. There are two paths to do them. Firstly, we can create PyRevit hook, which is much simpler and better way to create your event handlers. Or we could write a code, which will be an event handler, and then subscribe it to an event manually, so it gets executed when it's triggered. Alright, let's begin with the PyRevit hooks, as they are very simple to work with. First of all, we need to open our data extension folder, and then we're gonna create a hooks folder in here. If you're new to PyRevit, I will also leave a link in the description on how to create PyRevit extension yourself. It's fairly easy, so don't worry. Now, inside this hooks folder, we can create a few Python files for different events, and PyRevit will know which one is which by their names. And for that, we need to reference PyRevit developer documentation, so you know where to find the right names. So let's go and have a look inside PyRevit's developer documentation. Go to Google and type PyRevit dev docs, and you'll find this Notion page, developers documentation. Click on it. I know there are lots of different pages here, but we will only focus on the ones that are helpful for hooks. First of all, we can see here, there is create your first hook, I'm gonna open it. And if we're gonna scroll down, we're also gonna see anatomy of hook scripts, I'm also gonna open it. And lastly, there is this extension hooks, let's open it as well. And we're gonna start from top. First one tells you how to create your first hook. In here, this little tutorial, it tells you that you need to create a hooks folder inside of your dot extension. And in this case, they show you how to create view activated hook. Let's actually take and try it as well. I'm gonna copy this name, view activated. I'm gonna come back to the hooks folder and I'm gonna rename this file like this. Now, PyRevit will know that the code inside this file is gonna be related to view activated hook. Let's go back in here, I'm gonna scroll through and you will see that there is also a code snippet right here. It's very simple. It's gonna get PyRevit forms, it's gonna get execution parameters, and then it's gonna get the current active view from the event and display its name. We're gonna copy this whole thing and place right here. Now, let's go to Revit and try it out. First of all, go to PyRevit and reload your PyRevit extension. All right, now, when it's reloaded, I can go and try to open a new view. Whenever I'm gonna do this, you can see I get this message. It gives me the view name of this, because we created a hook which will display the view name whenever we change it. Let's open another view, and you see we instantly get another message. So this is how hooks work. I'm gonna come to our hooks. In this case, I don't want this hook to be activated, so I'm just gonna put it in the folder. I'm gonna call it archive. I'm gonna drop it there. Now, let's have a look what happens in Revit. If I'm gonna change my view, it's just gonna tell me cannot find target file, maybe delete it. This is because we have moved our hook. So we can just reload PyRevit and then it's gonna be fine. Now, let's come back. And here we can scroll through. It gives you a little bit more information about what's going on. And then anatomy of hook scripts. Let's go in there, and here we can scroll through. There are two ways to get your sender and arguments, and this will be useful to get our document and different elements and so on. Now, 
We scroll through, you can read a little bit more information here, but we're gonna go straight to the extension hooks, and this is where you can find all the names for your PyRevit hooks. In this column, you can see there is hook script name. This is how we need to name our Python files in the hooks folder. And on the right, it tells you to which event is gonna subscribe. Because in here, you can see there is application document close, application document created, application document printed. Then there are also a few UI application idling, application closing, dialog box showing, file exported, and so on. There are a bunch of different events, and we just need to choose the right one and take the same name. In our case, we wanna create event for the command. So we're gonna scroll down, and you'll notice that there is this three. There is command before execution, command can execute, and command execute. In the third column, you see some description. It tells you that it's gonna execute before original command is executed, execute when Revit needs to know whether a tool is available, and also override the normal function of the tool. In our case, we would want to use this one, command before execute. And notice in here, there is cmd ID. We need to find our command ID right here in the, in the square brackets. For example, we can name it command before execution id in place component. And you all guessed it, it's when you create in place component. So now we have a question, how do we find this id? And there are multiple different ways, some people even look in their keyboard shortcuts, some people look in journals, but there are two much simpler ways. All right, now let's go to Revit, then go to PyRevit tab. Right here, you will see a spy pull down menu. Then click on list elements. And in here, you'll notice there is system postable commands. Click on it and it's gonna print you all available possible commands in here. There are definitely hundreds of them, if not thousands, and you can look in here. At first, it has the, some human name, then ID that we actually need of this command, and this is what we're gonna write in the square brackets, then ID, which I don't even know where it's supposed to be used. From here, we can click on this button right here to open in a browser, and this will allow us to make Ctrl F and look for import cat. I can see it right here, and the name is ID file import. So I'm gonna copy this one. Alternatively, we could also get it with a code. Let's go to add ins tab and open our Revit Python shell. In here, I'm just gonna paste this code. First of all, we need to import UI module. Then we can get our Revit command ID, which is an actual class, by using lookup postable command ID. And we're gonna use postable command enumeration, and we're gonna get one of its values. And you can see that this postable command has all these values that we can think of in Revit API documentation. And in here, I'm just gonna print this element and also the name of this element. I'm gonna click on run. You can see that I'm getting element of the type Revit command ID. And in this case, it has a name of ID file import. I can also paste this code. And this is the part from the Spy Revit script that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna print it. It's gonna print all the names of the possible commands and their IDs, which you can use to actually name your Spy Revit hook. All right, let's go back on track. We need this name of the ID file import. And I'm gonna copy this. Now let's go to the hooks folder and we need to create a new hook and we need to name it command dash before that exec and in square brackets we're gonna paste id file import. Make sure it's a python file. Now this is supposed to be an event which is subscribed to this specific button. So whenever we're gonna click on the import cat, this code should be activated. Let's open and test it. I'm just gonna write here import cat click. Now we're gonna go to Revit. For the first time, we need to reload PyRevit, and then after that, we can make any changes without even reloading it. This is why PyRevit hooks are so great. All right, now let's click on the insert, and we're gonna click on import cat. And when clicking it, I get this print statement, import cat clicked, which is our hook, and then the action happens. So this is happens before the action, which is good. Now we're gonna cancel it, and I'm gonna come here and actually write the code. So first of all, I'm gonna put the UTF-8 encoding, so I can use some special symbols as well. Then we're gonna make our imports. From PyRevit, we're gonna import Revit and exec params. And then from Autodesk Create UI, we can import task dialog. So we can prompt this warning message to users. Now, we need to get a few variables. So first of all, we can get our sender by using this dunder event sender. This is what I showed you in PyRevit developers documentation. The same way we can get the arguments. The first one is gonna be UI application. And the second one is gonna be event arguments, which is gonna be a little bit different class for different events. But in this case, it's gonna be before executed events argument. I know it sounds confusing, but it's just so you know what kind of class it is. Sometimes you'll also notice this syntax that you can get it from the exec parameters, which we imported from PyRevit. But to be honest, this was much more reliable for me. Now, the next one, we need to get our document. We can use this Revit variable and write doc. You will also sometimes notice in somebody's hooks that people get it from arguments get document. And I also saw somebody use arguments document. This one haven't worked for me, 
but this one worked in different kind of events. Not on the command before execution, but it did work in other events for me. And I'm gonna keep the simplest, which is Revit document. Now we have our variables and we can create some logic for this script. So what should happen? All right, in the main, we're gonna check if our document is the family document or not. I'm gonna write, if not document is family document, and then we're gonna show a warning. I'm gonna use this task dialog class, and there's a show method. We're gonna provide two arguments. First one is the title. Let's write big brother is watching. The second one is the content itself. I'm gonna write import cat is not allowed, use link cat instead. And after that, we can stop execution or we can also ask the user for the password. So a few users can actually import cats, but not everyone has access to this. To ask user for a password, I'm gonna use pyravid form. We're gonna write from pyravid forms, import ask for string. Then we're gonna define our password inside this code, but you can make it more secure by placing somewhere outside. And then we're gonna get user input by writing ask for string, and we need to fill two arguments. I wanna write my prompt, only users with the password can import cat, and our title is gonna be import cat blocked. Now we can check if user input is matching the password and then either cancel execution of this button or just allow it to happen. Then in arguments, there's a property called cancel. We're gonna set it to true. And lastly, this one is only gonna execute in the regular projects, but in the family project, we will be able to import our cats. But we can also make some action there. In this case, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm just gonna keep this task dialog show, paste it here. I'm gonna change title to family cat import. And here we're gonna write import cat is allowed in families. This is all it takes to create this kind of event. Just gonna save it, then let's go to Revit. And now I'm gonna try to import something. I'm in my project, so I'm gonna click on import cat. Then I get this task dialog. It tells me import cat is not allowed, use link cat instead. Now when I'm gonna click on close, it's gonna ask me for password. Only users with a password can import. I'm gonna write test. Nothing happens because password was wrong. Now let's try it again. Click on it, we are not allowed. And this time we're gonna write learn Revit API.com. Click on OK. And this time you can see I get access to import cat format. And it's not just import cat, we can subscribe to any button in Revit and do some action or prevent user from doing something or even do something for them. So this is how we subscribe to events by using PyRevit hooks. This is very simple and very great, but I also wanna show you the regular way. I'm gonna put it inside the archive and reload PyRevit so we don't have any event in Revit. Now let's go, I'm gonna click on import cat and it works because we don't have any events anymore. We just moved our PyRevit hook away. This is good. Now, how do we create it with the code? I'm just gonna go and make it inside of PyRevit shell, but you can also make it inside PyRevit and so on. The main difference is that you need to execute this code yourself. I can also create a startup script, which will be executed every time Revit is started. But now in here, I'm just gonna paste the code and explain it briefly so we don't code it all together. First of all, we are also gonna make some imports and then from .NET library, we need to also add reference to system and from system, import event handler. Then we can define our function for the trigger event. In this case, I'm also gonna use task dialog and I'm just gonna give it title stop and write do not import. I also noticed that it's actually supposed to be UI task dialog. Now it's okay. Next, we need to get our UI application, which is pretty much the this dunder Revit variable itself. And we need to get our command ID. There are also two ways to do this. First, we can use this UI Revit command ID lookup command ID and just write the name, same name that we gave to PyRevit hook. Or we could use this code and actually use this enumeration. I think I misspelled it here, it should be a possible command. Both of these will return you exactly the same thing, so you can choose which one you want. And now we're gonna take this function and bind it to a certain event. For this, we're gonna go to UI application, then create add in command binding and provide this command ID. Now, once we have this binding, now we're gonna take this binding and we can choose from one of the three states. There is executed, before executed, and something else. And we can subscribe to the event. So we take this binding when it's executed, and we're gonna subscribe to event handler. Then in here we write UI events executed arguments, and inside we can provide our function. This is how we subscribe to an event with regular Python code. We're also gonna print errors if we get any, but we are not supposed to. Now, I'm gonna click on run, Tells me that possible command is not defined because it's right here. Make it UI possible command. And now we're gonna click on run and it's applied this event. How do I know this? Let's copy the code and leave it. Now I'm gonna go to insert, click on import cat. It gives me this warning, do not import. So this code that we executed has created an event handler and assigned it to this certain event. 
Now, the problem here is that unsubs unsubscribing from this event is a little bit harder. Usually what I do, I just go and paste the same code, and in here where you subscribe to this event by using plus equals, you have to make minus equals. Now, if I'm gonna click on run, it also executed, no errors, let's close it. And now, when I'm gonna go to insert, click on import cat, I just go straight to the import and there is no more any task dialog warnings. Because we have unsubscribed from this event, so this event handler doesn't exist anymore, and this just happens. Alright, we finished with the command events, and I hope that you found it useful. Now you can try to create your own hooks to other commands. And also, keep in mind that you can crash your Revit if you're going to make a lot of errors in your event handlers. So please double check your code before you're actually gonna create any events, to make it bulletproof. And if you wanna see other videos on other events too, let me know down in the comments what events are you interested in and how would you like to use them. Huge thanks to my supporters, and if you are new to Revit API, check out my free ebook The Beginner's Guide to Revit API. Happy coding everyone, goodbye.